Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where today we're starting a new series in Roblox Studio on how to make a team-based soccer football game. Now in the past, I've made a tutorial series and maybe you've seen it before or seen a little bit of it on how to make a soccer game. And it is different than what we were trying to make this time. So in that previous series, you could only control one player on a team. In this series, we want to make it to where you control the entire team so you can switch control uh, back and forth between different characters like pretty much every soccer game you've ever played so that that's what we want to do i think it would be very unique and a lot of fun if you still don't know what i'm talking about it's like mario strikers here this is like my favorite soccer game to play it is what we will be trying to i'm not going to say emulate or try to copy um uh, but it it's what i'm talking about when i say uh, a team-based soccer game because you see that he's controlling Yoshi with the ball and Yoshi can shoot it or he can pass it to someone else on his team. See how they're passing the ball back and forth. That's what we want to be able to do. So I've already done the first few steps in this project. So if we hit play, uh, it, it, I haven't done much. If, like if we hit play, the camera should just be sitting there. But that's a big first step. And that's what I'm going to show you all how to get to today. We can't control any players. We can't move around, but we have disabled the default character. Uh, I thought we had from loading. Oh, it's be yeah, we, we have. I just forgot about, I got to drag in this starter character. So if I hit play now, uh, there should be no, yeah, there's no default character. And the camera is set to be looking down at the field like this so we can see the whole field. And these are going to be our characters that we control. For right now and maybe forever I, I don't know it might just be a game where the players are just inanimate objects i don't know depends how well this series goes if we want to add humanoid characters i'm not going to make any guarantees on this series like i said i'm making this and releasing videos on the fly i plan on trying to release at least a video a week but we'll see how that goes i will be releasing the videos earlier on my patreon so if you want to support me and you want to get this series earlier i will just as soon as i get the video made i'll put it on my patreon you can get up to date much faster if you support me on patreon but yeah this is what we got today this is a big first step it doesn't look like much but roblox really fights you when you're trying to disable the the default built-in character and and the camera system. But let me show you guys how we get around using the default character in camera. So first of all, in your workspace, make a make a model, just a blank model, and rename it to starter character with a capital S and a capital C. It has to be spelled exactly like this. All right, now in that, click this plus button, and we just wanna add in a part, and you wanna rename this to humanoid root part and it's got to be named and it's spelled exactly like that with a capital h a capital r and a capital p now you just want to set the transparency on this part to be one that'll make it invisible and then we also want to add in the starter character a humanoid so just do that and once you get that made and you get all you get a humanoid and a humanoid root part in there with a transparency of one click and drag this starter character into your starter player folder and so what that's going to do is that's going to tell roblox hey instead of the default character we want to use this starter character instead and we just made it an invisible blank canvas basically so now if we hit play this is what it'll look like Although you don't have this soccer field and everything set up yet. Let me, let's let's do that next. So I just searched soccer in this models toolbox. And I just grabbed, I think it was this one. It was like the first field and it had a really good rating. But you can use whatever field you want. But so when you get your field into the scene, one thing you want to do is to center the field to the world position. So by that, I mean, just make sure when you click on your soccer field and scroll down and look under the transform properties that under position, the first number is zero and the last number is zero. The second number is your Y axis. That's where you move it on this axis. 
And so that is probably not going to be zero. It's probably going to be a little bit greater than zero. And that's fine. That won't matter. But we do want the X position and the Z position to be zero as that'll make our lives a whole lot easier. It's pretty important. Do that. And then you need to make your home team and your away team. Now, I just got them as parts. Each each player or each character right now is just a single part. And under part type, do, where is it? Or shape, part shape. I did cylinder. You could also do block if you wanted to or what really whatever shape you want. I just like cylinder and think it makes the most sense for this. So we that's what we did. Set the color to be whatever you want. And then just duplicate it a few times and position it around the scene. I did a model instead of a folder as we can use some C-frame properties of the model, which you can't access by doing a folder. So yeah, do a model as the parent. Name it home team with a capital H, capital T, and away team with a capital A and a capital T. Although it doesn't necessarily matter. You just got to remember what you name these things as you're, we're going to reference them in our script. So yeah, that brings me to our first script. You want to create under starter character scripts, just a blank local script and name it animate with a capital A. And you just want to leave this blank. This is going to override a built-in script that we need to just completely blank out and we don't want to run. That is important to do and to put it underneath starter character scripts. And then your first real script is going to be another local script under starter player scripts. And you can name it whatever you want. I did camera setup. And if we look at it, these are our references, our variables that we're going to call. And then this line prevents the character from loading automatically. And then down here is the camera setup. So the camera is midpoint, just looking at the vector 3.0, which is just the dead zero this is the zero point of the world. This is why we wanted to center our field. And then you can set the camera height and the camera distance. So if I were to adjust this distance to 300 and hit play, we should be way zoomed out. But I like 150. So I'm going back to 150. And there's probably a better way to set the camera. Right now we're using the run service dot render step, which I don't know how often that gets called, but I know it's like a bunch of times per second. So we there's probably a better way. We can just set this on the start once, but we're just going to leave it like this for now. That's something we can come back to later down the road, though, if we need to. Or we, we store that into camera position, and then we set the C frame of the camera to be that camera's position and looking at the midpoint. So I hope that made sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. Just copy this. I hope it's big enough for you guys to see it. I've got it zoomed in all the way. So now once you press play, it should hopefully look like this and we should be on the same page and ready for part two of this series. So part two is I'm just going to try to get the players moving around and be able to switch it. Actually, part two will just be just trying to get a single player to move around. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. And thank you for watching. Please consider supporting me on Patreon because these videos are going on Patreon first. On YouTube, I'm going to be uploading one per week. So I don't know what day of the week that will be yet, but thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.